And now for something completely different. Smoke medical. We eat every day. The following thoughts on Hoppy Hour represent Brian Hoppy and Pastic. Listener discretion is advised. Live from Tampa Bay, you are tuned in to Hoppy Hour. He's the voice of a generation that got screwed by the baby boomers. Welcome back to Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour. Happy Hour starts in four, three, two, happy, happy, happy. This is Happy Hour with Happy. What's up? This is Happy Hour. I am your host, Ryan Happy. On the phone line, I've been listening to this man. I can't believe it. I don't even want to say it out loud. It's been about 15 years. I was a sophomore at John Hersey High School, and I heard this man the first day he was on air when I had my permit, and I was driving to school with my mom. Back then, he was known as Brother Fred. Now he's known just as Fred, and you can hear him every morning on 103.5 KISS FM in Chicago. Fred from The Fred Show is on Hoppy Hour. What's up, bro? Man, you're making me sound old talking about driving around permit, the car. Jesus. I heard your first day, bro. I remember I I liked it from the I liked it from the beginning. You just uh you I, I do I don't want to say you had growing pains, but your show's very elite now. Well, it's it's been a long road, but uh, but thank you, and and I'm happy to still be here doing this. It's a dream come true. I, I mean that. I know people say that, but I mean that. What's been so like dreamy about it? Did you always have your eyes set on Chicago? Yeah, I, I always wanted to come to Chicago. Uh, obviously, you know anybody doing this wants to be in a in a major L.A., New York, Chicago, and uh, for me, this was the one, and and I. I took a shot and they took a shot on me and I, I didn't know how it was going to go. I really didn't. But I figured worst case scenario is uh, I tried it and uh, maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. But I could always go somewhere else. And uh, fortunately, it's knock on wood, still here, still doing it. Yeah. Do you hear the sound effect? That's you knocking on wood, bro. Look at you. I mean, think about it. I grew up in Chicago. Obviously, I was there from 93 to 2014. And uh, there were a lot of shows like Rovers, Morning Glory, and all these shows growing up that came into Chicago and left after seven months. And there was a show called The Morning Fix that was on Q101 that failed. It was all these out-of-towners that came in, and they just didn't do what they did. They didn't do what Man Cow did, what Brand Meyer did, what Steve Dahl did, what Eddie and Jobo did. How does it feel to have the... I know, let me turn off the notification. Sorry about that. How does it feel that the longevity that the other names I just said have had, that you've had the same longevity? I mean, that was a different time. And I don't, I don't know if, if I would have been good enough to stand with those names. I really don't. I mean, those are some really iconic names and, and, uh, you know, true entertainers. And, but I'm, I'm grateful that, that yeah it's true i mean some of our competitors have had an awful lot of shows uh in the time period that we've been on the air and i think it speaks to a few things i mean the team is amazing we have a great show great team and uh and the radio station and iheart has been committed to you know giving us an opportunity i mean early on we didn't do very well and it took a long time uh to build and they let us do that and i'm not sure that everybody else you know that you've mentioned they were given the, the tools or the time or whatever else. And, and we were, so I think it's a combination of a lot of things, but it's, uh, it, it's pretty amazing. Now I want to ask you, do you guys do a very, um, how do I word this? When you do the show each day, is it a big focus to be relatable and to be like everybody's friend? Cause it feels like I know you guys, like I've known you for a while, but I haven't met your crew. But when I listen to you guys via podcast and growing up in Chicago on the radio, I always felt like I knew everyone that's ever been on your show. Yeah, I mean, the truth is, and, and other shows will say this, I don't know if it's true. It hasn't always been true, you know, in various times in my career, but everybody in that room likes each other. We're all friends. We, we all, we hang out. We would hang out. We do hang out. Um, and I wouldn't even say that there has to be an emphasis on relatability because everybody's in the room for for their own reason. We know what that is. Everybody knows what their what their sort of role is. And so we just kind of do it. I mean, it's, uh, <laughs> you know, sometimes it sounds better than others, but 
but I, I it's just it, it's a lot of chemistry there uh, naturally, which you know obviously over fifteen years you can fourteen years or whatever you can you can make it that way, you know you. And, and like I said, you know, Angie was there for a long time with me, and, and there was no issue there. She wanted to do her own show, went off and did it. She's part of the group I'm talking about. But it's like, you know, over the over the years, people who want to be there, people who fit in, they stay. And the people who don't wind up leaving or, you know, whatever. And and so, you know, you say emphasis. I say I'm, I'm lucky that a lot of it's just kind of organic. How often do you speak to Angie in 2024? Every day. I see her every day. She's two doors down. That's awesome. You guys, man, Fred and Angie, just that name is, it's very iconic is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. I'm lucky that she was my partner when I came to town and, and, uh, you know, we are extremely different people, but I think the show, you know, reflected that and did really well for a long time. And, and I think she wanted to do something that a lot of women in the business, um, a lot of females have not been given the opportunity to do and, and haven't done, which is lead their own show, especially on that format. Um, you know, she's, She's doing, I don't know, active rock, I guess, or I don't even know what it's, she's on a rock station. I don't know much about the format uh, as far as what specifically to call it, but, but, uh, you know, she's leading her own show. She's doing great. And uh, I think it takes a lot of courage and uh, I'm real happy for her success. What was um, some of the advice you got from friends going into 2010 when you began in Chicago? Because it's a city that you really have to gain the trust of the audience. It's very hard to explain if you're not from Chicago. And I interviewed Mark G. and Greco about two weeks ago, and he said the biggest compliment he ever got was somebody came up to him and said, you're one of us, even though he's from Buffalo, New York. And I feel the same way about you, Fred. It feels like you're from Chicago. I feel like that now too. And, and it was something I guess I didn't consider or didn't know it was too stupid to know enough about. But when I first got to town and you, know, you read him at the time, Robert feeder and, you know, different people writing about Chicago radio at the time. And it was, this guy's an outsider and it probably won't work. And I guess I had no idea just how proud this radio market is, but on the flip side, the other side of the coin, if you can earn loyalty in this town, um, it is, it is almost like no other. I'm not sure if, I don't think LA is this way. New York might be this way, but I don't know of a lot of radio markets that are as proud uh, of the media and, and as loyal to the media as Chicago has been traditionally. And so, yeah, I mean, it was, it was kind of daunting. It was like, you know, will I ever be accepted? Um, and I, I think I have been. And, uh, and I think the only way to do that is just to express that that's, that's the, what you want, that what you hope happens that you, you know, that you wanted to be here and you want to be a part of it. And, and that's, that's all I can really say. I mean, I, I wanted to live here and I wanted to be considered a Chicagoan and I wanted them to accept me. And, and I, it was, I was almost that direct about it. So when you first joined, um, one Oh three, five kiss FM, was it everything you expected the last 14 years or has it been a lot more different? Like if you would have spoken to yourself back then and then you talk to yourself now, is it what you thought it was going to be? No, um, I think, you know, I worked in, in Dallas briefly, but in college for a radio station that didn't do very well. Um, so I guess I kind of got a major market look, you know, uh, or, or I got to experience what that was early on, but I didn't know what to compare it to. And then Austin and Charlotte, both great markets, but I guess I figured when we got to, when I got to Chicago, it was just going to be like, roll out the red carpet, all the resources, all the, all the tools, all the money, all the marketing, all the all the bells and whistles. And uh, it hasn't been that way. Um, it, it, it really seems to be like LA, New York, and then Chicago. And that, that gap is, can be big, um, you know, kind of looking at it from the inside. And I'm not entirely sure why uh, a lot of it has to do with revenue, but, but also, I mean, look, Chicago is a huge, um, you know, world renowned international city. And, and it's, and it's been supportive of, of, radio in particular for a very long time. So I, I, there was a gap and it was, it was a little mystifying at first. It just didn't feel quite like I thought it would, but um, otherwise, I mean, I guess I just didn't know what to expect. Like, yeah. I'm just lucky to get every, every year I do this. I'm just lucky to feel like I got another year. I mean, honestly, it really is like that. I, I can kind of snap my fingers and remember coming here and it's, it's been a, you know, quite a long time. Now, 
Do you ever have this? Because I know you're from Arizona and I currently live in Tampa Bay. But do you ever have it where when you go out and visit somewhere else, it's kind of a reminder of how big Chicago is? Because for me, whenever I visit, and I've visited about seven times in the last 10 years coming back home to Illinois, and Tampa Bay feels big. But there is something about when I land at O'Hare Airport and my mom picks me up, there's just something where I'm like, man, this is a massive area. It's hard to explain. No, I, I know exactly what you mean. And it's kind of funny because, you know, friends will fly into O'Hare, connecting flight or something, and they'll take a picture of of the loop out of the window and be like, and send it to me. Or It's happened more than once. Hey, there's your city. Or, you know, people will refer to, to downtown as – like that's where the audience is. And the funny thing is that that is not where the audience is. I mean, sure we have some, but it, it's this, it's, you know, going North and West and South, as far as you, your eye can see and beyond, you know, that's, that's where everyone, that's where our core is. And it feels like it just goes on and on and on. It's you're right. It's a massive place. I think the thing that really resonated for me with morning radio in the 90s and 2000s and early 2010s until I graduated in 2012 was that it was a way to have entertainment pre-social media and early social media for millennials getting up in the morning not wanting to go to school. I listened to your predecessor and I listened to Eddie and Jobo and then I listened to you and you guys were like this almost like friend in my room that I could listen to while getting dressed and I was half awake and my mom was making cinnamon toast and coffee for me. There was always something sort of, I don't want to say romantic about Chicago radio, but it was like comfort food for me speaking for someone that did not want to go to school and that just wanted to do radio. It always felt like Chicago radio was my friend being an only child and like having that speak into my room. For example, hearing about what happened the previous night on Jersey Shore or the end of American Idol. Like it's just been a wild ride to listen to, if that makes sense. No, it doesn't. You talk about what Mark Jean Greco said about being accepted. And it's like, I think the best compliment that we can get is that we're part of people's day, that they make that choice. And it sounds cheesy, but I mean, look, uh, there's never been more competition in as far as what, you know, what draws people's attention in, whether it's streaming or other radio shows or, you know, podcasting, whatever it is. And so that's the whole game. You know, the whole game is, is developing those relationships and whether they like me or anyone else on the show and whatever the draw is, it's, it's exactly what you said. It's that companionship aspect. That is something that radio continues to deliver that I don't think other mediums do as well at, or, and maybe they do, but the fact that we're sort of built into the car and built into a lot of people's routines, um, it's really valuable and really important. How do you feel about all the, competition of TikTok, social media, all these streaming platforms like Netflix and that. Because I'll interview some radio guys and a lot of the older ones don't like it because I feel like they're threatened. But I feel like I already know the answer you're going to say that you enjoy the competition of having all those mediums versus radio. Well, enjoy... I don't know if I enjoy it. I, of course, I'd love to live in a world where... Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I do love the competition. You're right. I, it, it is so scattered right now. And it, it, it's so, uh, I'm, I'm trying to think of the word that I'm looking for. It, 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 there's so much and so many different places for people to go. And some of that we can take an advantage, take advantage of TikTok, Instagram, you know, th those sorts of things really help extend our, our relationship with our audience. But, um, you know, it's fractured. There's, it's just so many different, there's so much for people to, to consume. And I think, again, you know, the thing about radio is that car radio, that car radio, as long as we have that, you know, we have that built-in delivery method. And, you know, I know that you started a podcast and, and yeah, you've had radio jobs and you've been able to promote it, but I mean, you see how difficult it is to get, to develop an audience because you got to find them. You got to, you're, you're your own marketing when you're a podcast, at least I've had the head start of people who listen to kiss FM or, or who have us on their presets it's a place to start. And so I'm grateful for that, but it, it, uh, is it the end of radio? No, but does it make things more difficult? Absolutely. Yeah. Podcasting is weird because my show is more of a radio show on a podcast. Cause like I'll be talking to girls on dating apps 
And they're like, what do you do? And I'm like, I have a day job in radio and I host a podcast. And a lot of them are like, oh, do you talk about murder or what do you talk about? It's very weird because um, I, I don't know, podcasts are just so bizarre because I remember when a podcast first came out, like it's even weird to think about the name, bro. A podcast is called that because it was on an iPod and iPods don't really exist anymore. I think about that a lot. I'm like, we're just going to call it a yeah. podcast forever, but we don't have iPods anymore. It's essentially a portable radio show. No, I, I, you're absolutely right. And I just think it, it, the margins have become so slim for everybody. You know, it's just it's, as far as you have to be that much better, that much more strategic, that much more prepared because people are just used to the, what they want when they want it. And Hey, if they don't like one podcast, they hit stop, download another one. If they don't like one radio show, they hit stop, download another one or, or flip the channel or whatever. It's just, there are so many places to go. I mean, if you think of the average car, you've got, you know, satellite and, and then you've got Apple CarPlay and you've got the radio and you've got, I mean, it's, you know, um, you gotta be, you gotta be on your game. So, I've always been curious about this as a radio geek. You've been in radio for a minute. What was the biggest difference when the ratings were just written down versus the PPM format? Now, how did you change the way you did radio when things were just written down versus how it's done now? Yeah, it's a lot more strategic as far as when we do things, when we take breaks, how we try and maximize you know, every single minute, as opposed to back when people were just writing down what they were listening to. I mean, if you, the best example of it I've ever heard is if you were asked by your doctor, personal trainer, someone to, to do a food log for a week where you wrote down everything that you, that you ate, maybe day one and day two, you'd be really specific, but maybe by day three, four, five, you forget. And you just go, ah, oh, I, I don't know. I listened to the, or I, I ate this, I ate that, I ate this. And you weren't being as precise. So what happened was a lot of these big personality shows like ours or, and some of our competitors would get four hours of credit just blindly or five hours of credit or however long they would just cross out all the hours. Cause well, of course I listened to the Fred show. Of course I listened to this and that, even if they weren't listening for that long. And so, and now we're getting real measurement of what people are actually doing. And you want to talk about the compression and being fractured and things like that. I mean, if they flip the channel, you know, if they listen for three minutes as opposed to four, that makes a, a huge difference um, in whether we get credit for the quarter hour or not. It's, it's, it's gotten very technical. And for that reason, we have to be even more strategic because every minute counts. Every second counts, really. How does that make you feel in a way that do you feel like if something isn't going well on the show, like, like, let's say a bit isn't going the way it's going. Are you thinking about that in the back of your head? And then you're like, Hey, maybe it's time to move on. Honestly. Yes. Um, and I try not to let, you know, some of the more technical aspects of things get in the way of, of our show being organic, but, but yes, I mean, you know, if I'm running late and I'm going to miss, that's, you know, they call them straddles across a quarter hour. And I think about, man, maybe I just, maybe I just blew a whole quarter. I mean, it's, it's really crazy and it's frustrating because I mean, I just looked at the Chicago ratings and the difference between, you know, 25, 54, the difference between third place and 10th place is 0.7. I mean, less than one share separates all that rank. And it's like that, what that represents is literally one quarter hour here, one quarter hour there. It's really like we're really splitting hairs at this point. And I have a hard time believing that it's accurate. And granted, we've been on the right side of it for a long time, and I'm grateful for that. But, you know, do I do I think when we were number one every demo all the time, were we that good? I, I don't know. You know, if we're fifth for a month, do I think we're fifth? I, I don't know. I really don't know. It, it, it's, it's, it's a very antiquated system that I, I don't think very well represents what people are actually doing. Do you think radio is going to ever adapt from it or is this just going to be what they use? I don't know. They, they have to change something because, you know, the radio companies spend millions of dollars to get this information that is flawed. And again, you know, I'm not, I shouldn't be complaining because typically we do pretty well, but um, I would just say in general, I don't think it, the sample sizes and the, the way that people consume podcasting and using earbuds and, and streaming later and listening live. And there's just so many variables that I don't think are being accurately accounted for. And I, I do think that the industry is searching for a better solution, but right now 
that's the only one that seems universally accepted by the advertising community as the one because you know we we have our own streaming metrics you have your own streaming metrics odyssey has theirs and hubbard has theirs and you know everyone can show you information that says that no one's listening to anybody else but you but nielsen seems to be that one sort of independent entity that everyone has accepted for the time being as the one but i think the times are changing so when it comes to the city of chicago and you moving there 14 years ago, what's the biggest difference you've seen in the city the past 14 years? So let's say when you moved there in 2010 to now, what's the one thing that is different? You know, I'm not going to cr- credit one particular aspect to this, but I live in the city. I live in the loop. And I mean, it is a different place than it was. And I don't, I think COVID has mostly to do with that, but I mean, certainly crime, like every other big city, um, you know, I think the way people shop and the way people live, and I think a lot has changed in the last 14 years. I mean, a lot of these office buildings are empty. A lot of the the businesses that were supported by those office buildings on the bottom floors, you know, the, 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 the CVSs and the restaurants and things like that have left. A lot of the, you know, flagship stores on Michigan Avenue were gone. And it's not a ghost town by any means. It's still an incredible city with a lot of vibrancy. But it, it's a little different um, in the city center than it was when I moved here, for sure. You know what I've always said about Illinois is, like, let's say um, a Target goes out of business in Florida. It'll be replaced with something within six months. But Illinois, I don't know if it's because of the high taxes or whatnot, but there will be empty stores for 20 years. There will be like a massive empty Dominix or Joel Asco or Meyer or Target or Macy's. It is the weirdest thing, Fred. I've noticed it where I go, they can't put anything there. Maybe it's because it's worth millions and it's huge to fix, to fit. Like, for example, right across the street from John Hersey High School was an empty Dominix that closed around like 2003 and they didn't put something in there until about 2014 and it was just an ugly eyesore on that parking lot across the block from John Hersey High School and all these Dominixes in the area were just empty and creepy which is kind of where that whole abandoned mall concept kind of came with online a lot of it's in the Midwest what I'm saying is I don't know what it is specifically about Illinois, bro, but when a business is shuttered, it's there for a while. Yeah, I mean, and it's not just, uh, I don't mean to, I'm obviously not picking on Chicago. I think Chicago gets a bad rap for things that every other city is experiencing, but I, I guess it's what I know. And, and to your point, you know, when you go up and down Michigan Avenue, there are, there are storefronts and spaces that are empty that are so big. Uh, to your point, I mean, Macy's is out of Water Tower. Almost everybody's out of Water Tower. If you know Chicago, you know about Water Tower. And yeah. it's, it's amazing to me to think that was a thriving shopping mall when I moved here that is almost empty. And, and it, again, it's not because the city isn't popular and people don't, tourists don't come. It's not because of crime. Um, it's because, you know, malls all over the country are, are like that because people don't, they don't buy stuff like that anymore. They don't necessarily need to go to the mall to get the thing they want. And it's, it, it's weird. It, it's, it's weird to see. So this isn't going to happen, but let's say Fred runs for mayor. What would be the first thing? <laughs> <laughs> what would be the first thing you would propose to change about Chicago? What's one thing that you look at the city? Cause I went to Chicago for my birthday in August that is not the same city, bro. I don't know if I was, I, I didn't feel as safe or whatever. I don't know what it was, but I was at the Virgin Hotel on a date and it was really funny. This girl was a cop and she told me halfway through she was a cop and I was like, uh, this is kind of weird. Um, and it was very weird. And then she ended up, we were just talking on Bumble and she somehow found my phone number and sent sent me a happy birthday text and I never gave her my phone number. That really creeped me out. But what would be the one thing? And she was you, a cop? Bro. Damn. Bro. And she goes, happy birthday, cutie. And I go, thank you. Who is this? And she's like, whatever her name from the Virgin Hotel. I'm like, I never gave you my number. That freaked me out, Fred. That was, <laughs> isn't that weird? <laughs> that is weird. That is weird. What's the um, one, what's the one thing you change about Chicago? 
I would have to say something related to crime and I, and, and it is a taboo topic and a complicated one that no one's really been able to sort out. But, um, and obviously there's a, there's a bigger picture here. Um, other, other parts, I think of local government and, and social services and, you know, the, there's a there's a there's a root. I think there are a number of causes for it, but something involving crime, uh, I think, would be my focus. And I, I again, I think Chicago gets a bad rap because I feel like if you look at crime per capita, it's not even in the top ten. I mean, I, I think a lot of cities are having similar problems, but that's got to be it. Um, somehow cleaning up the the image. What's your favorite NFL team? Is it the Bears now, or what is it, Cardinals? You know, I was a Panthers guy for a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, long story about that, but I, I, I'm a little bit homeless in the NFL. Um, Me too. I, the, I think you would agree as a Chicagoan, but I would like to be a Bears fan. The Bears are a difficult team. I don't if you support. Born into it, I don't support it anymore. I, I, Fred, I can't. I, I can't. It's, it's I can't. And I know if they go out and be amazing, that I'll be a bandwagoner. But I will raise my hand right now and say I will be a bandwagoner when the time is right. But with uh, red zone and all the options to watch on Sunday, I haven't watched the Bears game since the uh, double doink game. I I just quit. I I didn't watch one full game with Fields ever. I I just can't do it, dude. It's a tough team. Uh, you know, the people I know who are the are really diehard Bears fans, they, you know, their grandfather was, their father was, their mom was. Yeah. They were born into it. They, they, they grew up here, and, and I get that. Uh, and I'll be honest, I wish they were good. I hope that they get good because when I first moved here, they were pretty good, and they were you know, going into the playoffs you know, a round or two deep. And, yeah. and everyone loved it. Same with the Blackhawks, same with the Cubs, same with the Bulls. I mean, same with the White Sox. I, I, would, love for, I would love for those teams to be good. Uh, because the city is, everyone loves it. You know, it's a, it, it really brings up the mood. Fred, there was something I'll never forget. I was about to graduate high school, and I was at my friend's house, and he knew a lot about the human body. And he went on to like be a physical therapist or something. Like The kid was really smart. And we were watching the first round of the NBA playoffs in 2012 against the uh, 76ers. It was Andre Iguodala versus Derrick Rose. And Derrick Rose should not have been in the game in the fourth quarter with about two minutes left. I remember it clearly. And Derrick Rose falls down. And my friend goes, oh, he tore his ACL. And I went, what does that mean? And he goes, he'll never be the same again. And I went, I don't think that's true. It's the truth. There was something yeah. about that day that Derrick Rose hurt himself that that city was never the same because I have enough memories of Michael Jordan. I have more memories of the aftermath, and my dad had all the VHSs, so I've seen all the games, so I, I feel enough about Michael Jordan. But there was something, Fred, when Derrick Rose tore that ACL that just... I'm still heartbroken. I think I'm more heartbroken about that than breakups I've had. Like That moment... It's just, and then he almost came back in 2015 and then he got hurt again. Like, <sighs> right. Yeah. It, it is sad because that guy uh, was so incredible. And I think, you know, it's it had so much promise for the bulls and, and unfortunately he's, you know, on various teams and, and he has had various sort of starts and stops ever since then. And he hasn't really been able to, to, to be the guy that we all remember the MVP guy. And, uh, it's, it's too bad. It's actually, it's tragic really because he, he's so gifted. I was reading online now that he had a really bad diet. Cause he had that machine of Skittles in his mansion or whatever. And I was reading online that he wasn't eating the healthiest and they think that's why he hurt himself. But I don't know if that's true. I feel like looking back on it, he was sort of like a running back as a point guard and he would always fall to the ground. He would always get the and one and whatever. And Stacy King would be like big time players make big, make big time plays. And it was all exciting, but I feel like he needed to like have like a jump shot or something. And he kind of did, but dude, that was like the proof that the human body is finite where he just was like, not treating himself well, looking back on it. He was a very dangerous player. The way he was all, dude, he was always falling to the ground. Yeah, you make a good point. I mean, he was always going to the basket, getting hit. He wasn't afraid, you know, these big dudes to knock him down. And, and it has to take a toll. But, uh, 
Yeah, I've got an autographed basketball in my office, Derek Rose, the MVP season. I look at it all the time and I think it's kind of a shame, you know, what, what could have been. And obviously he made a lot of money and, and wound up, you know, having a career, but it is not what it could have been. It's not what I think the Bulls hoped it would be. And I, I think you're right. A lot changed for the Bulls uh, after the demise of, of D Rose. What about um, the uh, booing of what's the guy's name? Jerry Krause of Jerry Krause's. Uh, yeah. What do yeah. you think of that? His wife. Yeah, that's unacceptable. Uh, I mean, this poor woman. First of all, that guy was the architect of what six championships. Yes. I mean, he, he may not have done it the right way, and but at the time that, that the team was winning, no one seemed to have a problem with it, and he's dead. So I, you know, booing his wife, I don't really know what good that what what that accomplishes, <laughs> and it looked it looked really sort of Philly. It, it kind of came off like dogish and you know kind of rude and and not what this city is about and, and and you know rightfully so most of the most of the the feedback about that in the media was that it was that it was in poor taste uh, as it should have been well fred i didn't really like the last dance because michael jordan made it i didn't like it when i watched it I don't know. Like when I watched it during COVID, I think I watched two episodes and it just felt like it was a Michael Jordan infomercial. And I think a lot of people for watching the last dance were brainwashed into thinking it was all Jerry Krause's fault in my humble opinion. Yeah, it was definitely a Jordan focused uh, piece. And, you know, I was a Jordan guy and, and I, I grew up, I was, a, I was a kid, you know, sort of really, the time that I was the most focused on the NBA were, were those days. I was a Phoenix Suns ball boy during that time. I mean, I was nice. really sort of engrossed in it. And yeah. And I, so it was fun to watch because I remember a lot of that. Um, but I think you're right. I mean, I don't know that Scotty was necessarily portrayed. Well, I don't know that, you know, really, it, it, I think it was the truth as Michael Jordan saw it. And it's hard to know how much truth that is, but he's earned the right to tell his story. There's no doubt about that. Two things. Uh, what was it like being a ball boy for the Suns? Did you ever see Barkley? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, it was the 93-94 season, the year after the Bulls beat them in the finals, and uh, Barkley was on that team, and he was awesome. Uh, you know, I did every home game, so and the playoffs, and the All-Star game that year, so it was probably 70 games, something like that, and into the playoffs. We lost, I believe, in the I want to say it was the, it was in the Western Conference Finals or the or the, the semifinals to the to the Rockets that year, but uh, I mean you know every night it was Shaq, it was Patrick Ewing, it was Alonzo Mourning, it was that's, I mean that's all amazing. these all these names. It was and as a as a twelve thirteen year old boy, I mean these are truly your heroes. I mean you're playing NBA Jam, you're you grew up with this, you're collecting their cards and and you're standing next to these people every night. It was. Uh, it was really something. I mean, it, it was an incredible experience. Really surreal. What do you think about the Phoenix Suns now over the past, like, let's say five years with Devin Booker? I think the Phoenix Suns should have won against the Bucks several years ago. Yes. And I think that was their shot. And there's no reason why they shouldn't have won that series. They were up to nothing. Um, I think that was, that was the one to win. I think that team was probably the deepest. Um, it had the most promise. And I think, you know, I love Devin Booker. Um, I, you know, I, I don't think they have the bench and I think we're seeing that right now with that team in the fourth quarter, you know, they get out scored in the fourth quarter, almost every game. It's hard to imagine how they're going to beat some of these teams. Um, you know, even with Kevin Durant, uh, they got three guys, you know, and, and then a bunch of a bunch of role players, and I don't, I don't know how they're going to do it. I'd love for them to, but I'm not sure how they're going to do it. I'm very indifferent about Kevin Durant. I, I I don't know what I think of him. Yeah, I mean, he puts up a lot of points, and I, it costs a lot of money too. I, I I don't know. I'm with you. I I, I wasn't mad about it, but it, it was an expensive trade. You know, it was an expensive. We traded a lot of the future of the team for to win right now, and when you do that, you got to win right now. And I'm not I'm not sure if we're good enough to beat the Mavericks uh, in a in a seven game series. Uh, I don't know. I mean, can we beat the Bucks in a seven game series? I, I don't know. How many uh, Suns games have you been able to watch this year? 
I'm not as many as I'd like. You know, the West Coast games can be tough because I'm asleep, but I've watched five or six. Uh, I watched yesterday, lost to the Bucks. But, yeah, uh, yeah. It's uh, I, I love Booker. I really do. Yeah, he's awesome, and I hope they can get some supporting cast around him. I like Booker because of his swag. I like his uh, classic car collection. He's like a Gen Z Kobe Bryant in a way. That's an interesting parallel. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I love him. I love him. And it would be fun to see them go deep into the playoffs again. So what are some fun things you have planned for the Fred show this year in 2024? We got a, we did a live podcast last year that uh, a lot more people came out than I expected. I think we expected a couple hundred and we got well over a thousand. And nice, so bro. Look at you this year. Look at you, Fred. Well, I know. I know. Honestly. And I'm, I'm dead serious. You know, all of us in the show. Are like, Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. We're all like, I don't, who, who's going to come to this thing? Like, and then, so we'll see. We get, we went with a bigger venue this year. So we'll see how that goes. That's exciting. I mean, um, you know, of course we had the syndication growing and I'm, I'm happy to say that, our first market uh, is Raleigh, North Carolina, and we've we've begun knock on wood again, but we've got some traction there and knocking on a little wood. earlier than expected. So yeah, so I'd love to see you know I'd love to see that grow and um, but you know ultimately the only thing that's really going to matter is continued success in Chicago and and I hope we can keep it moving. One of my favorite things you do on your show is having Jason Brown describe the Bears game, and I think he actually gets better <laughs> each time he does it. How was his reaction to Fields getting traded? Um, frankly, I don't even know if he knows that it happened or if he knew that it happened until I said something to him. So uh, <laughs> he doesn't. Uh, he, he's our, our uh, vice president of sports reporting, but I I don't know how much attention to it he's paying. That's but, one of the uh, greatest segments I've ever heard. Well, it's funny because he, his picks are usually pretty good, and he has no idea what he's talking about. So it's uh, isn't that kind of always how it goes, though? Yeah, it's funny. At my radio job, I'm in a March Madness pool, and I just know that the person oh, yeah. in the the person in HR that's just going to close their eyes and pick each team is the one that's going to win it all. Oh yeah, it's always the person who picks based on like mascot or. <laughs> you know, favorite color or whatever. It's like, and, and you're over here trying to be cerebral about it. It's uh, it's always that way. Yeah. I'm purposely not even like reading any of the bracket allergy or whatever that's called. I just, just gonna, I'm just going to go, okay, this team, this team and see if I can win it all. Yeah. I and mean, you really never know. I mean, it's, it's, that's what everyone loves about it. Right. Is you, you, the best teams can get beaten by the worst teams and on any given day, you just, it, cause you know, it's one and done. Fred, can you believe we've been talking for 38 minutes? I can't. And I got to tell you, man, I'm not just saying this. You, uh, you know, I, I've, you've asked me on the podcast a number of times over a number of years mm -hmm. and, uh, Four every times. time you get better and yeah, well, thank you. I'm honored truly. <laughs> and every time you get better and, and this is, uh, you're really getting good at this, man. Like, honestly, very smooth. Your questions are good. I mean, uh, it's amazing. You, you've, you've come a very, very long way. I know you've worked really hard at it. And, um, I know that you've, you've paid attention. You're a student of the business and, and, uh, you have some, you know, some, some people that you, you listen to and monitor and pay attention to like you and talk to. And well, I appreciate that, but you're, you're really, uh, I was, that's what I was thinking as we were doing this was I, I, I'm really proud of you and this was a great interview and I'm not pandering and I'm not, you know, I'm not, uh, I'm impressed and Thank I, you. I hope that you continue to grow and I, I'm proud of the syndication and you know, the distribution that you've got going with this thing. And yeah, let know, me, uh, with, let me uh, plug it. I'm on without, ride. Yeah. I'm on ride the wave media with just Blaine. Who's worked for like Apple music and Spotify and worked for big boy. Uh, with, I, with, um, I heart radio. So it's very exciting to, um, be picked up. And in my radio school, the, uh, Illinois media school picked me up on the be on air podcast network. And, um, it's very crazy when like, I just think about being in Arlington Heights in this very middle class house and just having the radio be my friend, like and B ninety six and one oh three five was like my go to. And then it's like I'm friends with you and I'm acquaintances with Eddie Volkman. It's it's very crazy how 
I just never gave up. Like, for example, one of my favorite memories, I drove 75 minutes, Fred, to get a picture with Eddie and Jobo when they did an appearance for United Auto Insurance in 2013. <laughs> I mean, it's interesting because, you know, from the, not long after I got to town, I started hearing from you and, and you're persistent yeah. and, you know, you're passionate and it's paid off because uh, you, you've made a name for yourself and, and you know, well, everybody knows who you are, man, and and you're 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 growing up in your own right, and I'm excited for you, and you know, keep it up. Well, two things. First of all, I was able to friend request you because Robert Feeder was a big fan of saying the real name of radio hosts, and he was like Christopher <laughs> Frederick. Oh, yeah. So then I added yeah. you on um, pre Facebook in 2010. I was like, where is this Christopher Frederick? <laughs> oh yeah, he loved to use our real names. Always did. Second of all, this is an alleged thing, and um, I'm going to dance around it very easily. Have you ever uh, done shrooms, Fred? Allegedly. Yeah, I'm on that right now. Allegedly. Allegedly, I'm, I'm on it right now. Yeah, and what, do you, what, what sort of vibe are you feeling right now? Like, my brain's very euphoric. There's different rankings. There's 20 chocolates that are in the box, allegedly and there's different rankings one's like one to three is like allegedly you're chill four to six is euphoric and my favorite is 10 to 20 is the walls come down and i'm on that four to six euphoric allegedly where i'm just like oh yeah i'm i'm able to talk it's really opened up my brain i allegedly began doing it in august bro august 28 23 was the month of me crying I cried every day in August. I'd be driving home from a kava bar or hanging out with friends, and I was weeping. I think I could have filled up my gas tank with the amount of tears I had, but, bro, it helped me heal, allegedly. So you're, you're able to tap into to sort of emotions and, yeah. and places in your brain that well, you, you aren't able to otherwise. Huh? I don't like talking about it anymore because it's so old, but after my breakup, I just suppressed it and just kind of slept around for a year and just kind of put the body count up and wasn't really... <sighs> You ever go through that type of breakup where all of a sudden you go on Bumble and you're just crushing it, but at some point you're like, you're almost worn out. You're just like, why am I? I know that sounds slutty, but like a heartbroken man becomes a dog. Well, I'm a lot older than you and I've definitely had those times where, <laughs> where you're seeking some sort of, uh, you're seeking, you're seeking some sort of affirmation and, and it, it winds up being very empty. Yeah. I know what you mean. Oh, it's fun. No, don't get me wrong. It's fun in every second, but you know what I learned about dating in the last year and a half, Fred? was um, I blindsided myself and I would turn a blind eye back before my two relationships when I would date around. I had this fictional, bizarre mindset, Fred, that I was the only guy they were talking to. And the last year and a half, <laughs> the last year and a half, the funniest thing happened. I took this girl. She looked like a Tampa Bay version of Sammy Sweetheart. She was so hot. And I took her downtown to St. Pete, and we saw Ludacris. And she's like, all these guys are mad that I'm out with you because they all think I'm just dating them. And then uh, she, she quit talking to me. And she would talk about her ex every time. She's like, oh, my God, Joshua did this, and Joshua did that. And I'm like... Let's just have sex and never talk to each other again. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, with the dating apps, you got to assume that, that I, everybody you're talking but to it, is it, talking to It was humbling. Else. Here's how I knew, Fred. Here's how I knew. I'll never forget it. She would post where she was at. She did one time post me and tag me, which was interesting. But most of the time after that, whenever we hung out, she would post where she was at but not post who she was with. And then she didn't talk to me for like a week. Just, I, I don't know why. And then she was at a steak dinner and then she was at an EDM show. And I'm like, okay, I, I get it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's so many choices, so much variety. It's on these just, things. nobody's it's, really real till they're real. It's just like radio with all the options out there. It is crazy, bro. You can literally What's your swiping game? Mine is I swipe on everything because I view it as a circus. Now, I only, when I'm doing that stuff, I only swipe <laughs> on what I like. That way, when I get a match, 
But I had a buddy like that. He would just say yes to everything and then ju- just to see who liked him back. It's fun, bro, because you never know. You might get a Helga or you might get a Carly. You, you never know what you're going to get. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you catch yeah, my drift, especially know. in Florida, you got to imagine in Florida, it's Chicago girls, bro. I was on Tinder and Bumble when I visited in August. It was Chicago girls, like how how do I say this nicely? Florida girls are allegedly sluts. Chicago girls were like, oh, well, we got to go to a dinner in downtown Chicago and you're going to have to pay 55 bucks for parking. Chicago girls, they're harder to get. Well, I don't know what to compare it to, really. I've I've, I've not done much in Florida. You so got to you got to do Florida. But, uh, you got to do Florida sometime. You you got to come to Tampa Bay. I will show you to the best places, Fred. I'm gonna do it. I got some buddies living down there, Joe Show and those guys, and my friend Mojo's down there all the time. So I need I do need to come visit, see you, and I'd and, be honored. Uh, yeah, I'll let you know, Fred. Thanks a lot for this interview, bro. Hey, I appreciate you. I know what I said to you. Doing great. And uh, and thanks for having me again. This has been Hoppy Hour. I am your host, Ryan Hoppy, signing off. Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour.